welcome to the shooting show. This week we're at Rothwell Estate, North Lincolnshire, on the last day of the game shooting season. Plus, we bring you all the latest news from the British Shooting Show. It's the very last day of the season and the best keepers in the nation have descended on Rothwell for the traditional final day cockshin. Among them is shooting show star Jeff Garrett. Right, we're back at Rothwell uh, for the last day of the season. Um, back, back with me mate John Paul, uh, known him now for about 20 years and uh, it always seems to be tradition now that we come up for the last day of the season. It's his last day of the year obviously and he's got a few keepers and colleagues uh, to uh, just help him out, just to uh, finish a few cock pheasants off for the last day of the year. Weather today is good. Uh, we've got overcast. We've got the verge of um, Storm Henry just about to hit us. We've got a nice wind at the moment. The forecast is for the wind to get stronger. And having shot Rothwell in the past a few times, I know we're going to be into some spectacular birds. Um, I'm using... Uh, Caesar Granini, 32 inch over and under 20 bore. I'm stoking it up with Ely VIP game, 20 bores, fibre, uh, five shot, 30 gram. With the next pheasant shooting opportunity not coming until October, we'd better make this one count. On to the first drive, and luckily enough, Jeff gets the first bird. Shot! And with that, the action starts to build nicely all the way down the line. Oh. The wind is well up and it's only getting stronger as the drive goes on. That means the birds are real screamers, but it looks like Jeff has got his eye in. That's the end of drive one. It's shaping up to be a very special day indeed. Done the business there. Go a long way to get under birds like that. Um, just coming out of there. Just hitting that wind and just curling on that wind was just unbelievable. You, you know, you're killing birds 40, 50 yards, 60 yards up there, dropping 78 yards behind you. Unbelievable drive. Jason there, I see him kill two or three, absolutely pair, stomped I you'd up get there. The, I thought you get the right left, that's why I didn't... Oh mate, I, I killed, I'll say, killed yeah. that one there mate, and to see that one there, took that one out there mate, what a way to finish a drive. Yeah, I, could, I could see the two of them coming down, yeah. I had to beat on the higher one, I was yeah. like, I let him, I let him, you yeah. got that one first, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's rough work, it's finest mate, when they're coming like that. 
I've just had a little pick up with the dogman. Uh, dogman's got four of me partridges and a pheasant. I've got two here, partridges and three pheasants. So uh, there's ten picked up there. I think there's another couple more which he's going to have a look at right down the bottom of the hedge here. But uh, fantastic drive to start the day with. Can't get any better than that. Up next we'll have a classic drive with the birds flushing from the top of a bank, which means they'll be even higher and faster. Let's see how Jeff fares. There was a, a nice lot of partridges breaking out to our right and the bulk of the fence broke out to our left but we had some really good, I killed probably one of the highest fences I think I've ever killed a hen pheasant there early on in the drive it's fallen dead way back up there and I killed three or four nice partridges and a couple of mediocre cock pheasants there so all in all I'm happy with the drive with what I got. Oh and the pigeon, mustn't forget the pigeon. You're given that much that you're nearly having to take your eye off the bird. Yeah. You're, you're getting out of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of yeah. Well, go on, isn't they? Whoosh, yeah, just that's whoosh gone over you. So you have to start in front of them. You can't swing through no, because you're, no, you're so no. far in front of them. You have to yeah. stay in front of them. I've got a couple of bird shit. Pick up. There's a. By now the wind's so strong we can barely pick up Jeff's voice with the camera but we're pretty sure he's enjoying himself. We make Kadash for some shelter, then after the morning refreshments, we're off to the next drive. Six. Any hopes that the wind might die down are quickly crushed, but as long as Jeff can stay standing, he's in for some cracking birds. I think Hurricane Henry's just hit us. The drive is underway and Jeff should be ready to face the first pheasants that flush. But where's he off to now? Let's have another go. With his cap back in his possession, Jeff can finally attend to the task at hand. Oh. Hat. Lost my hat twice, my earmuffs got blown off. I hit three partridges, hopefully with a good dogman we can pick them up in that hedge there and killed a, killed a cock pheasant that was going about 100 mile an hour. Um, we won't talk about the misses, um, which I had quite a few of them there, but they were just bombing. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Quick, quick high-flying high birds, but um, like I say, with a, with a good dog, we'll pick up three parts, which is a pigeon and a pheasant. Right. This really is a day to remember for gun and cameraman alike. But Jeff's spending more time chasing his hat than shooting, so we wisely leave him to it and head to the neighbouring peg, 
occupied by ex-Irish keeper Jason Doyle. <laughs> Hurry up, Jeff! Here we go, James in front. Not put off by the game force win, Jason judges the lead expertly and picks off a few lightning fast birds. And super drive. Not many birds in it, but anything that came to us was hauling ass as they say. Um, but great drive, just a pleasure to be out and shooting these birds. They're super birds to shoot. And in this weather, it's really, really difficult. Every bird you shoot is a memorable one. Um, it's brilliant, I love it. Seeing the guns this happy is what game shooting is really all about. And the day's not over yet. We stick with Jason, who has adapted well to the tricky conditions. He hasn't lost his hat once. Last drive of the day. As the sun dips low in the February sky, Jason connects with a few more birds. And as you'd expect at the end of the season, the birds have been testing. But couple that to the wind and what you get is some of the best sporting birds that one could wish for. The presentation of these Rothwell birds has been second to none. It's certainly a keepering triumph for John Pyle and his team to deliver this kind of sport in such challenging conditions. Missed a couple, but had some really nice ones there. Happy with the way I shot and a fantastic end to a great day. It was really enjoyable. Just a pleasure to be here and those birds on that wind are brilliant shooting and to be able to hit the odd one is <laughs> making me very happy. <laughs> with the day at an end, it's time to meet the man himself. Uh, for those people that don't know, this is uh, John Pyle, uh, a long, fr long standing friend of mine who I first met when I first joined the NGO and he was the founder member of Gamekeeper's Diaries, done all the camera work. And today, John, you know, we've just had an absolutely fantastic day, mate. I mean, forget the size of the bag, you know, we have shot at some of the most spectacular events mm. and partridges, high, fast, curling birds that has absolutely tested us out to the maximum. Mm. I mean, today I was seeing a very different sight picture and lead picture on the birds because we shoot a lot of pigeons and I shoot a lot of clays, so you sort of have it in your head of where you need to be on a bird of a certain speed and, and a certain distance. But today that all went out the window. It came down much more to the speed of your swing. Um, the birds were just going so fast. I mean, I'm guessing those patches were probably going twice as fast as they normally go. So it was down to the speed of your swing. And when you swing that fast, it's difficult to read the line and keep the right line. So. I suppose a lot of technique from years of practice, a hell of a lot of luck and educated guesswork. But for me, it came off really well today. I shot some of the best birds I've ever shot and I'll remember for a long time. John, yep. thank you very much, Morning. mate. It's been a pleasure, mate. And I hope I'll return the favour yep. in February, mate. Come I, down yeah, to my place. Come out, sure. right? yeah, yeah, nice come, to see you right, again. Thanks very much, John. Yep. Hope to see you again soon yep. in yep. Ireland. Yep. Yeah. yeah, we'll be back next year. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Jeff and Jason there. Signing off with Ely's best cartridges. The end of the game shooting season in style, and now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, a special edition from the British Shooting Show. The show might only have finished yesterday, but we couldn't wait to bring you all the news and the latest releases at this mammoth event. So here's what's hot at Stoneley. First up, at the Ely Hawk stand, we had a quick chat with an Olympian. From I got first got involved with the sport, um, I was writing to all different sponsors, it, just to try and get some help because it is an expensive sport 
and I was very fortunate that Ely came back and they really did take a gamble with me. Over the years, over the last six years or so, I think we've come a really long way. I think there's always a little bit of nerves and pressure there when it is, I have been working for the last four years to reach my goal of getting to Rio. But I think I've got to treat it like any other competition. I'm just going there and really want to enjoy the experience and do it as best as I possibly can. When I go to the Olympics, I think, I've, well, any competition really, I'm always going for gold. Um, but as long as I know that I've done everything possible that I can to make it happen when I get there and put in a good performance, I will be happy. I've actually got my first competition on Monday next week. Um, which is the Qatar Open, so I'm basically going there to sort of get a feel for where I am this year and see how I'm progressing. I'm also going to be training sort of three times a week in the gym, anything from three to five days a week, so it is a very hectic year, but I think it's all worth it in the lead up to Rio to give it every, every chance I've got. And while we were there, we got the scoop on Ely's new trap load too. It's based loosely around the Superb, but what we've done is we've actually slightly altered the powders and reduced the recoil on the cartridge. We've reduced the recoil because trap shooters have to shoot and they have to concentrate. To get that perfect 100-300, it's a lot of concentration. What you don't want is a lot of recoil. So we've took the recoil out of it to make it really nice and smooth. By doing that, we've also reduced the muzzle flip on the barrel for that perfect second target acquisition. It's a premium product and we expect it to be marketed under £200 thousand. It's got the 5% anti-mini lead, so it's got the hard-hitting lead as well. But if sporting is more your thing, check out the new high-tech sporting gun from Parazzi. This is the latest uh, model from Parazzi. It is completely new. Uh, differences between this and the MX-8 and MX-12 derivatives is that the action, they've made the action just over 3mm wider, which has added 40 grams of weight right into the middle of the gun. It's improved the handling. Uh, the other features are that uh, this one is totally unique and it's much, it has a flared rib. Instead of being tapered down, this one is actually flared out. It goes from 7mm at the breech end down to 10mm or opens up to 10mm at the muzzle. So it's completely different. Uh, reasoning, perhaps reasoning for that, it gives a uh, quicker target acquisition and a wider field of view. We've had the trap versions, we're now just getting the first deliveries of the sporting versions. Um, Mr. Digweed has just taken delivery of his, so we will watch this space. It was guns, guns, guns at the British Shooting Show. Browning had a particularly tasty looking new shotgun. Shooting Show comes at a great time for us uh, every year because it's an opportunity to, to a launch platform for a brand new product and this is a brand new product to us, it's the B15, which is um, a hand finished Browning. The barrel and action is made from in our Maruki factory in Japan uh, on a specialist um, production line. It's not made on the standard production line. Uh, it's highly modified, and um, but we bring over the barrel and the action from Japan into Belgium, into our uh, workshop at Herstal, and we make this gun. We 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 stock it, we engrave it, we finish it, and you get a beautiful product like this at the end of it. And um, we have four guns in the range starting from under £10,000 retail, uh, culminating in this one here, which I've got, which is the top of the range one. This is the grade E, and this one sells for £15,000. Of course, the British Shooting Show isn't the only major field sports event at Stoneleigh. The UK Game Fair debuts outdoors at Stoneleigh this year. We caught up with the organisers to find out how the show is progressing. We are at the British Shooting Show at Stoneley and um, we're going to be using the same uh, showground for the UK Game Fair in July, 20, 22nd to the 24th. Um, we're going to be using a lot of the outdoor space here that was historically used for the Royal Show. Yeah, we think it's a fantastic venue because it copes really well with you know whatever you throw at it. As a purpose-built showground, it um, you know it does really well with any any weather. Though of course we're going to have glorious sunshine. We're really trying to bring uh, field sports back to the heart of the show to make it what, what we really feel a game fair should be. So hunting, shooting, fishing, gun dogs. Um, make sure we're including all those elements. Um, so there'll be clay shooting, there'll be air guns, there'll be uh, you know a fantastic gun makers row. We've already got the likes of uh, Beretta, Ely Hawk on board, Ruger. We've got uh, Basque and the Countryside Alliance on board, as well as BDS, uh, the uh, Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, the Game Keepers Welfare Trust. So yeah, the big organisations are really um, have really been strong in their support. 
we've been working in the shooting industry for a long time now and we, we know how important it is for people to have that flagship event that they can go to. You know, we're putting our heart and soul into making sure that this, um, this ticks all the boxes uh, for, for people who like shooting. Back to guns now, and there was a big song and dance at the Blazer stand over the new F-16 shotgun. It's half the price of the F-3, but how did they manage it? If the two guns were two cars, you'd be, you'd be comparing a rally car to a Formula One car. The F-3 is an absolute fine-tuned machine, and we've got that now down to a T. Um, we've got massive technical backup to support that system in, in Ian Mullen, the guns who can actually work with that gun and fine-tune it. However, with the F-16, the question is always how much of that do you actually need? So we've got, certainly we've got some shooters who say, right, I don't need to take it to that level. The options are still there, but the F-16 is just a much more focused product on people who might not want to go into trap shooting or for dealers who don't need that level of modularity. And what we are left with is the essence of what is a no-nonsense, absolute superb shotgun. The F-3 is one of the shallowest profiles in the 12 gauge as it is, but the F-16 is even lower. The design is bold where it can be, but it's got a very elegant look where it has to be. So we're not trying, in terms of look, we didn't try to invent, reinvent the wheel here, but what you have got is an absolute incredible piece of design that's just very pleasing on the eye. From shotguns to rifles, there was a whole new caliber available courtesy of Savage. It's a 1.7 WSM, which is a new caliber. It's a rimfire cartridge. It sits in between the 1.7 HMR and the 1.7 Hornet. Hornet Day have uh, started to make that round of ammunition, so we will be selling it with the Hornet Day brand along with the Savage Rifle. It's a bit of a difference because of the speed. It's, rimfire is going to be cheaper to run than the 1.7 Hornet, it being a centre fire. Uh, but this rifle has been completely redesigned. It has a uh, cocking on closing bolt uh, and it also has a, um, a rotary magazine. A totally new rifle for this calibre. Nice laminate stock, yeah, from all stock. It's a very, very nice rifle. It's had a lot of interest during the show. There's something for everyone at the British Shooting Show. We sniffed out an optical innovation too. New for this year, uh, first introduced here for the UK market, is the last addition to our Meostar R2 line. It's an 8x56, fixed power. Uh, traditionally, this has been a quite popular scope for the UK market uh, for people doing lamping at nighttime because with an 856 you have the ideal optical solution for low light shooting. 8 times magnification, 56mm objective, means a 7mm exit pupil. This is ideal for your eyes at nighttime when you're shooting because that's how big your pupil will dilate for a normal person. Right now we're still finalizing the pricing because this is a brand new addition to the UK market, but it'll fall in line with our R2 pricing, so anywhere between 1100 to 1300 British pounds. This is the latest addition to our Red Dot Side family called Mio Red. Uh, what's unique about Mio Red for us, it's a completely waterproof solution for a Red Dot Sight. Our previous Mio Sight 3, which is ideal for, say, running bore uh, hunting applications, has a battery compartment which is easy access, but because of the side compartment, not 100% waterproof. With the Mio Red, we've reduced the profile, made it a little bit smaller, more compact, and completely sealed the battery compartment, so it's 100% waterproof. Has five illumination adjustment settings for low light and daytime, easy push button control, and into, uh, independent windage and elevation adjustments. This is again brand new for the UK market, so the retail price is not 100% guarantee uh, set yet, um, we would estimate it to be somewhere around where the Mio site is today, so about 300 British pounds. And finally, it was back to the Ely Hawk stand to meet the winner of a day at the Woodies with Jeff Garrard. Okay, Mohammed, congratulations on uh, winning your prize with uh, you. Ely Hawk. Thank and, you. Uh, unfortunately, Jeff can't be here today, but uh, he'll show you how to shoot pigeons uh, with the, the Ely Pigeon Select, which you know Jeff promotes, and it's his own personal carriage of choice. I'm looking forward to it, learning from Jeff. I really like uh, Jeff's method because he, he doesn't use any kind of gimmicks or electronic um, decoys and stuff like that. He's just a simple... Old-fashioned field uh, Oh Yeah, I actually watch uh, shooting show re regularly. And uh, one of the episodes really sticks out to me is the uh, uh, when he shoots about 70 to 80 pigeons on, using only one dead pigeon yeah. to start with uh, near a motorway. Yeah. And that's that shows some um, kind of 
long-term knowledge. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to learn from him. This is one of the best yep. in pigeon shooting. Without a doubt. Yeah. Just good luck on your day. You know, and thank you very much for entering the competition. Take care. Yes. That was the British Shooting Show. And that was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and Twitter. That's follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, join it now. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>